Let's look at the key areas of an entity and the related risks of material misstatements. So we looked at them in the previous video but not in detail. So in this video we are going to go in details. Remember we are understanding the entity and its environment. So the first one is um, industry, regulatory and other external factors. Yeah, so under this, we have, uh, we shall start with the industry, industry conditions. Yeah, that the auditor is supposed to understand, or that the audit team is supposed to understand. First is um, market and competition for goods or services. For example, if... Um, A declining industry with high business failure will increase the pressure of management over state profits even when they are not making those profits. So the auditor should understand the market and then competition of goods and services in that industry. Then we have um, seasonal activity. This looks at the changing in demand for goods. As in the case of fashionable goods, for example, it may lead to like stock being outdated. So the risk here is that stock may be overstated. There may be an overstatement of closing inventory and profits of the period. Then we have energy supply and cost. For example, the fluctuation in oil prices may lead to overstatement of profits. Then uh, supplier and customer relationships, for example, long-term contracts may involve significant estimates of revenues and expenses that increase the risk of material misstatements. In case there is a long-term contract, its expenses are just estimated, even the revenues are just estimated, so there is a risk of material misstatement. Yeah, they can either overstate or understate. Then, uh, lastly, under industry conditions, we have technological developments. Technological developments make manufacturing plant and products like mobile phones outdated. And this can lead to overstatement of closing inventory. For example, let me say, yeah, phones, like they keep updating. Let me say for techno, every after one month, they release they release a new a new brand so the old stock may be outdated which will lead to an overstatement of closing inventory so those are some of the risks under industry conditions then the auditor should also understand the regulatory framework the taxation and then the interest rates in a particular industry or for a particular business. For example, an, an increase in the tax rate may lead to non-compliance. Like in case they increase the taxes, an organization can decide not to pay, and that is a risk. So an increase in tax rates may lead to non-compliance and fines, which may be underestimated or completely eliminated. So... One thing you're supposed to know about RISIX, like when you're stating a risk, uh, the keywords that are used, like something is either overstated or understated or eliminated. Yeah. Then non-compliance to laws may lead to closure of business, which may lead to the risk of going concern. Yeah, non-compliance to laws. Then a floating foreign exchange, like if it's ever-changing, it may lead to the usage of wrong rates, wrong exchange rates, in case the foreign exchange rates are always changing. So there can be either an overstatement or understatement.
Then lastly, we have the general economic conditions, including things like recession, availability of financing, inflation, currency revaluation, etc. So in case of a recession, it's when things are not going well, like everything is declining. So in case of a recession, receivables may find it difficult to pay. So there may be an understatement of bad debts and then overstatement of receivables. Then there is also low inventory turnover since the sales have declined and all that. So it will lead to overstatement of inventory, of closing inventory. Yeah, we shall look at those in details when we have an example on risk assessment. Then secondly, the second area, key area, is um, the nature of the entity. So the audit team is supposed to obtain understanding of the nature of the entity. And under this, we have um, an ownership of the entity. Complex structures may lead to wrong accounting, maybe for things like goodwill and then investments, which can lead to either an overstatement or an understatement. Then secondly, is business operations. So here, the audit team should understand the revenue sources, the products, services, major expenses, the use of electronic commerce such as internet sales and all that. So the audit team should understand like how the business operates in case the business gives warranties and then guarantees like they should know how they, they operate. Because provision of product warranties to customers may lead to understatement of provision for warranties in financial statements. Under business operations, the entity should also understand things like the production methods that are used by the entity and the activities that are exposed to environmental risks. They should also understand the alliances in case of any, the joint ventures and then the outsourcing activities. They should also understand or get to know the location of production facilities and warehouses in case maybe the company has multiple locations of factories and warehouses, they should know all their factories, the warehouses, and then the offices. So under business operations, the audit team should also understand the investment activities. For example, the planned or recent acquisitions or divert shares, a pending acquisition, things like that. So a pending acquisition may increase pressure of manipulating financial statements to increase the purchase price by management. In case they are about to buy something, they can record a wrong figure of what they are going to buy. They can increase the figure just for them to benefit. Then they should understand the financing activities like the debt structure, maybe the loans that they got, the terms and conditions, the leasing arrangements, whether there is any breach of loan terms, things like that. Then uh, lastly, financial reporting. For example, the industry-specific accounting practices for, like research and development for pharmaceutical entities. Yeah, so that is all about the nature of the entity that is supposed to be understood by the audit team. Structure and ownership and then business operations. Yeah, and all those were under business operations. So another key area that is supposed to be understood by the audit team is the accounting policies. So here... The auditors are supposed to understand the methods that the entity uses to account for significant and unusual transactions. Unusual transactions like things that do not happen occasionally, for example, acquiring a plant, things like that. Yeah, maybe selling a branch, 
so they should understand the methods that the entity uses to account for significant events and unusual transactions. Then understand the effect of significant accounting policies in areas with author authoritative guidance. Then they should understand the changes in the entity's accounting policy in case the entity decides to change the accounting policy. Then uh, the financial reporting standards, laws and regulations that are new to the entity and how they are to be adopted. Yeah, that is all about accounting policies. You should understand the methods and the policies used by the entity to account for different things. So another key area is objectives and strategies used by the entity. So they should understand the industry developments in case there is training of employees. Because if the entity lacks trained personnel, like there will be a lot of errors. Yeah, so it will lead to misstatements in the financial statements. Then they should understand if the new products the new products that were introduced in the business, they should understand if there was maybe expansion of the business or if there was use of a new IT system. A new IT system may lead to processing errors. So all those are risks that can lead to material misstatements. Another key area is... Um, the measurement and review of financial statements. So under this, the audit team should understand the key performance indicators, the trends, the budgets, and then the variance analysis of the entity. Then they should understand the comparison of the entity performance with that of the competitors. Then they should understand the employee performance measures and incentive compensation policies like how is employee performance measured? Is it based on the output or hours? Things like that. So they should understand the employee performance measures and then the incentive compensations. They should understand or they should get to know if there is any pressure to achieve performance targets. Because where there is pressure, like the employees can decide to give wrong figures just to get over that pressure. So there is a risk of misstatement in case there is pressure to achieve a particular performance target. Then lastly, they should understand the competitors and how they're performing. So the last part is... Uh, internal control so here the audit team should understand the control environment the risk assessment process the information system relevant to financial reporting should understand the control activities relevant to the audit and then monitoring of controls to improve financial reporting